cancer to begin with, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer worldwide. And in the clinical setting, they have shown that the combination of Fonfox and Bepabizumab is more effective in treating this cancer. However, there is still no robust preclinical study has been performed to show the effectiveness or to show the effects of this combination in treating this cancer. Therefore, our main aim uh, of this study is to reverse translate what we see clinically uh, in the combination of Fonfox and Bepabizumab into preclinical study. And then we try to implement contrast enhanced ultrasound to monitor early vessel response of Fonfox and Bepabizumab combination therapy uh, in clinical setting, in preclinical setting. And then we try to validate our CMS finding by using uh, immunohistochemistry. So this study has been done in eight weeks of RSS project. So uh, I've done tissue culture. Uh, we use HCP116 metastatic colorectal cancer, cancer cell line, which is the cell that we used in this study. And then we implanted the cell subcutaneously on the right flank of the bulb senior immunocompromised mice, as you can see in the IVs images here. And then we allow the uh, cells or the tumor to grow for a certain period of time. Uh, and then in the meanwhile, uh, uh, monitor the welfare of the mice and measure the size of the tumor by using calipers and also weigh the uh, mice. And then when we get specific size of a tumor, we randomize them into four groups. <coughs> the first group is the vehicle, we give them 5% of glucose and PBS. The second group is full box monotropy. The third group is methamphysomal monotropy and the fourth group is the combination therapy in which they receive full box first and then after 24 hours they receive methamphysomal and we assess the response of the vessels uh, towards the treatment by using contrast enhanced ultrasound and we use micro bubbles as our contrast as we can see in the video here we can see the perfusion inside the tumor which indicated by the green dots there that's the uh, perfusion or blood flow inside the tumor and by using this ultrasound as well we can see the <coughs> images uh, or uh, the, the volume of the tumor when we do ultrasound. So what we did was, first of all, I did baseline ultrasound before we started treatment, and then we dose, uh, uh, those who need to receive full pots, which is group uh, two and group four, with full pots dosing. 24 hours afterward, we gave those who need to receive bevacizumab, which is group three and group four, with bevacizumab. Then 24 hours later, we start our 24 hours ultrasound, and then 48 hours ultrasound, and then 72 hours ultrasound. After a week of treatment, we start all the animals, we take out the tumor, and then we do immunohistochemistry on the frozen tissue by using HERP2 and KI67 to look at the functional vessels and also uh, at the proliferation rate. So after a week of treatment, what we see was this a uh, significant reduction in the size of the tumor uh, in the group that treated with combination therapy of Falfox and Bepabizumab compared to the monotherapy of Bepabizumab and Falfox. So this is what exactly we see in the clinical setting, which combination therapy is more effective compared to monotherapy. So technically, we have successfully reverse translate what we see in the clinical setting into preclinical study. And in terms of immunohistochemistry, after a week of treatment as well, we have shown that there is significant reduction in the number of functional vessels in the group that treated with bevacizumab and combination therapy. So it might be because, uh, based on HESCAM hypothesis, bevacizumab causes uh, pruning of the vessels. So that's why we see the significant reduction in number of vessels in the group that treated with bevacizumab and also combination therapy. However, we doesn't see such much effects on the number of functional vessels in the group that treated with Fallfox. And in terms of proliferation rates, we can see there is significant reduction in the groups that treated with Fallfox uh, because as we know Fallfox is the uh, anti uh, is the apoptotic agents we use in chemotherapy so it causes apoptosis of the cells and therefore reduce uh, the rate of proliferation in the cell in that group. However, we doesn't see much changes in the group that treated with bevacizumab and also combination therapy. It might be because when bevacizumab put in the cells, it's impact or restrict the flow of fall faults into the tumor cells and therefore it doesn't cause uh, apoptosis of the cells. And as I said, we assess the uh, blood flow or the, uh, the re response of the blood vessels to the treatment by using contrast enhanced <coughs> ultrasounds. And we plot all the data into washing curve, which is a technique or method used by also in their paper. So basically we're just comparing the intensity of the blood flow before the treatment which is indicated by the black dots there, with the black intensity of the blood flow after the treatment, which is indicated by the red dot there. And what we found that after <coughs> uh, 72 hours of treatment before pox, there is reduction in the perfusion inside the tumor, even though we see it, there's no changes in the number of functional vessels. So it's something that we need to study more. 
And uh, in bevacizumab, after 24 hours of treatment, we see increase in the perfusion of the tumor. However, after 40 and 72 hours of treatment, we see decrease in the uh, decrease in the perfusion inside the tumor. And it's uh, correlated with what we see in the immunohistochemistry, which is we see reduction in number of functional vessels inside the tumor when we see recap two. So it's lead us uh, that we think that this finding is faced with both Haskam and Jane hypothesis, in which they explain about normalization of the vessels at the beginning of the response to a so they allow more provisions to the tumor and then after the normalization window is shut down which is after 24 to 48 hours they cause the spooning of the vessels and therefore we see reduction of the perfusion because of the reduction of the number of functional vessels and then with combination therapy we see maintenance of the flow despite of we see decrease in the number of functional vessels in the immunohistochemistry so it might be because some of the vessels uh, that Bevacizumab is effective in the new vessels that you uh, perform, uh, new created vessels by angiogenesis. However, it's not responsive to the old or mature vessels. So it might, uh, we might see that these mature vessels not responsive to Bevacizumab. So it's allow the flow or maintenance of the flow, and robots can pass through the vessels and they will cause uh, reduction of the size of tumor by the uh, action of apoptosis. So the conclusion is, in this study, we have successfully reverse translate what we see the response of combination of Polpox and Mephavisumab in clinical setting into preclinical study. We also have shown that Mephavisumab do reduce functional vessels uh, after one week of treatment. We also see that Polpox decreased tumor cell proliferation, but not with Mephavisumab. We also see that combination therapy does not reduce tumor cell proliferation. And we see that the early effect of Mephavisumab fits both Haskell and Jane hypothesis that speaks about normalization window and polar by pruning uh, of the vessels. And we also see that surprisingly, Paul Fox uh, does show reduction of the blood flow after 47 hours of treatment. And as I said before, combination therapy has no overall effects on the blood flow as it only shows maintenance of the blood flow, which is something that we want because we want, don't want too much flow and we don't want to less uh, flow inside the tumor. So, great appreciation to my supervisor, Dr. Ian Miller, my lab buddies, and great thanks to my PI, Dr. Enid Byrne. This study has been uh, approved by UCR <coughs> committee uh, and also funded by RSSI and Shupriti and my sponsor, Mara. Thank you so much.